I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with John Hoffman, co-creator of Only Murders in the Building. First of all, John, congratulations. This, is, this show has become an Emmy powerhouse in season one. Isn't that amazing? Beyond, beyond amazing. And, and um, uh, yeah, I'm utterly honoured and grateful. I can't even begin. So, you know, Only Murders has a very rare 100% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, um, heralding the show's hilarious and insightful approach to true crime, obsessives, also the trio of actors that we all just love. Um, so what does it mean to you that, you know, the Academy and critics and fans have really embraced this show? Like, are you taken aback? Is it, I mean, talk me through that reaction. I mean, I've been at this a long time. I will say that part just to lead off. And, and so I've seen a lot and, and um, you know, you can have hopes about a situation like this, but you can't ever expect it. And that's what I'm really doing. I feel like I'm checking myself more. And is this, is this, you know, and yet I also balance that with the problems of the stories I have to help guide to tell um, for season three. So I, it's this split focus thing of this lovely embrace that the show has had from, as you say, from, from many people. And, and I feel incredible relief about that, first of all, because if it had gone the other way with this crowd, I would have been like, do you wouldn't find me under, in the river? Um, but yeah. uh, but it's, it's a huge relief, but it's also, I just feel like it's, it's so in honor of literally every person. You know, these shows are, built on so many, you know, people stepping up and engaging and jumping into the same pond with you and, and, and it, you swim together and, and, and hopefully it works out something like this. And I just, I know it's, it's beyond, I can't believe yeah. it. You know, sometimes when I'm watching the show, and I can mention this offline, that I watch it with my my whole family. We watch it together. It's like an event for us every week. Um, I, I, I actually am almost pinching myself that I get to watch a show with Steve Martin and Martin Short. Um, like I'm one of those people that is obsessed with Father of the Bride and all their work that they've done over the decades. And I'm just feeling so fortunate that we get them both on the show then we get Selena Gomez, who I was aware of as a great performer. I had no idea she was so great as an actor as well. So you got this magic on screen. Um, what are your thoughts on the fact that you've got this show led by these three really wonderful performers? It, it's endless, my thoughts on it, but I, um, I can only tell you what recently happened was that, you know, all in one week, I was uh, at Selena's lovely 30th birthday party um, and she was as radiant as ever and, and, and as warm as she is and, and delightful and kind of crazily fabulous at the same time. And then I got um, a phone call yesterday from Steve Martin um, where I, in the middle of the writer's room, I went running out and I realized he said, oh, I butt dialed you. And uh, so I got butt dialed by Steve Martin in one day and then the next moment about a half an hour later I got a phone call a FaceTime from Marty Short uh, who was at an undisclosed location on this beautiful pond um, and he started the FaceTime with me uh, saying guess where I am and then he started doing Catherine Hepburn and On Golden Pond like oh look at the loops and so I was uh, you know this is my experience of working with these three in, in a week that combination and then just um, the pinch me moments are crazy just on set uh, in, in working with them every day. And, you know, they're, they're true collaborators and they're, they're geniuses all, but I really genuinely feel like they've become such close, you know, that's what happens when you do these shows, you become family, you become friends. And, and it, I, I you know, I, it, it still is a pinch me moment over, over who these people are. And, um, but you do quickly have to get to work with them too and, and sort of make sure they're okay with what they're doing. And uh, that's really fun with them. Yeah. Um, season one was really special. Obviously you're setting the scene for what the show's all about. It was like, to me, a, a really perfect season and, and hence the, the critic response. Um, so what, how did this idea come about with you and Steve Martin working together and bringing it to the screen because it's there's nothing really else like it out there. 
Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, and and it's uh, you know I, I can't I can't really describe the feelings around it, but I would say you know this was Steve's idea, uh, and and he had a very clear track on it. And I walked in to meet Steve, uh, introduced by Dan Fogelman and Jess Rosenthal, and. The magic from that moment on was the openness and the kindness and the um, sort of embrace of ideas that I was bringing and it immediately felt collaborative. And, and Steve and I hit it off quickly and sensibility wise. And when you really look back, I think the parts of the show that um, connect, it's a show about connection at a very specific time in the world, about lonely people coming out to like, you know, do the right thing and, you know, run the risk of, you know, someone down the hall might want to kill me. We had reverberations to what the world was going through when we finally landed in the world and, and through that theme and it felt necessary in some way to be laughing um, in that way within the context of a story that we were all feeling. So, but the embrace of the way in which I was hoping we could tell this story in its specific way that I think you're pointing to, um, that was the th other thing that really moved me from Steve, from Dan, from Jess, from everyone at the studio and the network and at Hulu and 20th and, and all the way up uh, to Dana Walden. It was just shocking to me that the mix of tones, the mix of genres, the desire to do something unexpected with the show was embraced. And, and we were able to sort of flourish in this moment to sort of say, we're gonna actually go beyond hopefully the thing that many people might expect from this show. So that was the amazing part. Um, and then, of course, I was just nothing but in a panic as we were shooting during a pandemic until the AD said to me at one point, OK, let's set up for the martini shot of season one. And I didn't realize how intensely you know, focused I was on trying to get this whole thing done because it's a mystery. And if you don't get everything, you don't get anything. So I was like, what's that? What do you mean it's a martini shot for season one? I said, hey. And he said, no, it's, it's just a shot of a phone. I'm like, well, we need that shot. So we're, we're, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. And it's the last shot of the season. And then I lost I, I, all of the sort of like pressure of wanting to fulfill. And I knew by that time, the stars, everyone else was involved in the show, uh, that we were happy with what we were doing. Um, it, and in that, in the, again, in the midst of all of the time, I think everybody felt very emotional about that, making anything. But it was a, it was a, rare rare experience on all levels to make this show yeah and then to get it become so successful and beloved i mean what a dream you know there's one episode in particular that I, we really have to talk about the boy from 6b because I, I could not believe how much that affected me i just thought it was just a beautiful little masterpiece without any dialogue Performance is a first rate. So Arthur Kostler's score is just phenomenal. And James Cavalier, he's got these beautiful, sad eyes that I was just so taken with that character. What went through your mind when you saw the episode come together so beautifully? That one was very big. Um, that was a big leap. In a season one of a show, to try and do a show like that, make an episode work like that. There's risks just everywhere you look and um, you have to trust, but you also have to do all your work and the planning and the explaining of the way in which we think we can pull this off. And you would need partners like Shireen Davis, um, who directed it uh, with such an eye and, and such skill. And, and, and you know, uh, we all jumped in on that one in ways that, you know, you crossed your fingers, but boy, when that first cut came in, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how riveted I was right from the beginning. And it certainly altered a lot through editing in many ways, but there was something that was carried through from the direction, from the writing. Stephen Markley, Ben Philippe wrote that episode. And, um, and then, uh, you know, the performances themselves, no one expected, could, could have expected uh, what James Caverly did in carrying that episode and but every way in which all the artists on that one were working the the delightful scrapple scene with amy ryan and steve martin um you know every little leap we were making in it just felt like it was singing uh in ways that i couldn't predict with no dialogue with nothing happening except that stunning score by sid 
and I, I, I was, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen right from the word go on, on that first cut. And so I knew we had an achievement. I wanted to check myself and then I started to get back from other people, but uh, I felt incredibly proud again that, you know, you take up, you, you, you throw the dice on certain things and, and think like, well, can we pull that off? And, and it's all due to the people involved in every way, every area. Yeah. You just sometimes do have to take chances and see what happens. And on that note, we're going to let you go for the time being, bring you back for a group chat. Thank you, John, for your time today. Oh, thank you, Bob. Thank you.